Now we're joined by St. Louis Public Radio's State House reporter, Marshall Griffin. Marshall, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, the, the gubernatorial race is something of an odd race. I, I had a feature about it this morning because they're both running on essentially the same issue, which is the economy and jobs. But they both disagree on the state of Missouri's economy. Nixon says we're doing well and we're improving, and Spence says the numbers are misleading. Joe, is this something that you've been seeing too? Yeah, I mean, basically Nixon says the state's doing better, and Spence says no, it's not. <laughs> but like all these races, beyond that, there's really other stuff going on. Right. Um, the uh, Spence has been jabbing at the governor because the governor, who has raised more money, has gotten a lot of it, as many Democrats do, from uh, lawyers, unions, and also from the Democratic Governors Association. The governor, in turn, they've noticed that uh, Spence, the bulk of his campaign money has come from his own pocket. He's put in about $6 million of his own money. Right. He also has gotten a significant amount from the Republican Governors Association. The biggest attack that the governor has launched against Spence has been his years on the board of a bank in St. Louis, which took federal bailout money and then decided not to start paying it back. And Spence was one of those who cast the vote to delay it. He says that they were recommended to do so by federal regulators. Uh, the governor has been hammering at that. Um, as a result, Spence ended up suing him, saying that the governor is making him is portraying him as a banker, and he's not a banker. So you're getting into a lot of this uh, back and forth over these types of issues, and not as much over some of the broader issues facing Missouri, and partly because they haven't had any debates. Now, as we saw in the piece that just aired, right to work is a pretty contentious issue in this race. What, what role do you think that's going to play? Very limited, I would think. It's, uh, it's come up as a uh, as a house bill or in a senate bill the past couple of sessions and maybe just gotten a little bit of, of floor time as a speech but the issue hasn't really moved very far so far um, at, at this point i don't know i would say it would be a few years several years if anything serious were going to happen as far as moving in that direction but it galvanizes turnout i mean yeah. it, the, right. the democrats have used this successfully over many years and it's not just in missouri uh... the Labor sees this as a drop-dead issue. Um, There's a huge fight in Wisconsin over it, Ohio, Indiana. And uh, so many of them see Nixon as their firewall. And so Labor's going all yeah, out to try to help Because if, if Spence wins, that, in, that could be go through the legislature quicker than in usual years. Correct, correct. Possibly I think that. it Well, would. let's talk a little bit about the attorney general race. It's between Democratic incumbent Chris Coster and Republican Ed Martin. Um, Coster's kind of been running as a all prosecutor, no politics. Just like you did in 2008. <laughs> right. It looks, it's almost right. like a, a deja vu in many respects. <laughs> and, and, and Martin has been trying to hammer him as being Obama's lawyer. Um, Jason, do you think that that label will stick? I mean, especially considering Coster has the endorsement of a conservative group like the NRA. Well, it, it remains to be seen whether that sticks or not. But what Coster has done this time, just as he did in 2008 against Republican Michael Givens, is he's thrown this box on Martin the I, you're not a prosecutor box. He right. used to be the Cass County prosecutor before he was in the Missouri Senate. And he uses that as kind of a selling point in his ads and, and to explain his, his, his emphasis on his attorney general. Um, and he's thrown that on Martin, but Martin and third party groups have attacked Coster for his decision making on the, the federal health care bill of not being decisive enough. Now, Coster has more money than Martin. I think public polling has shown Coster in the lead. We don't know what's going to happen, but I, I think that this is this is it's an interesting race to well, watch. The, but it's important because Coster is a former Republican and is generally expected to run as a Democrat for governor in 2016. So the Republicans want to try to knock him out before then. Now, one of the primary issues in the Secretary of State's race is voter ID. And currently in Missouri, you don't have to show a photo ID, a photo ID to vote. But that's something that. Um, Republican Shane Scholler would like to change. Right, and that's been an issue for for the last few years, and that's been a key rallying point for, for Shane Scholler. But the thing about that is, for a photo ID requirement to be implemented in the state, it would actually be a multi-tiered process that would be predicated by whether Nixon is governor or not. They'd have to pass a constitutional amendment by the voters, and then the legislature would have to pass a law, and Nixon could easily veto it. So I'm not really sure he's actually going to be able to implement that. But what about Candor's big argument against? Um, Candor is basically saying that that issue is is just you know 
made up and there isn't any voter fraud of, of note. The, no, thing no. That, the thing that really, it, what would benefit Scholar the most right now is probably the, the Romney push. Um, he, that will probably be the thing that would help him the most in this race. Uh, as far as uh, candor goes, he's, he's got a lot of money, but not as much name recognition. And the whole theme of his campaign so far has been, I'm a veteran, vote for me. Now, now Marshall, you've been covering the lieutenant governor's race. And it's, it's a race that hasn't really garnered a lot of attention. But um, as you've been saying, it's, it's something that's been heating up recently. Yes, it has. Um, there has the, the odd thing is there's been no debate between Peter Kinder and Susan Monte. Um, a lot of people would find that odd, but apparently uh, it, there has, I don't think there's been a whole lot of tradition tradition of uh, lieutenant governor candidates debating each there other. There was in 2008, but right. there right. hasn't been this year. Right. Yeah, right. but um, the, the, the really big, the reason it's gotten heated up is because of the, uh, the recent TV ads, the, the so-called jib-jab style ad that Susan Monte released showing, you know, Kinder, uh, Kinder's head on a cartoon body sliding down a stripper pole, bringing up the, you know, that controversy, the uh, the scandal of last year that uh, kind of torpedoed his uh, his plans to run for governor. Um, but this particular race is is kind of it's a little bit even right now. Linda Davis, or, or excuse me, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia Davis. Davis got yeah. her name wrong. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Cynthia Davis um, has possibly the chance to uh, hurt Kinder as far as taking away some Tea Party votes. Well, that's about all the time we have for Missouri's state, right? statewide races, but there's still plenty left to cover. Jason and I will be back later on to talk about Illinois' 12th congressional district, but now we're going back to Jim.